Hi, people of the Philippines and people of the world. Hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking. Hi, Troy. Kumusta? Hi, Tito Boy. How are you po? <laughs> ito. Okay. Let's begin here. Paano nag ito? Tell me the story. You know, kaibigan was something that I've always wanted to do even since I was a kid. When I really got my first taste of musical directing at 18, when I was able to play with professional bands, that's when I started kind of daydreaming about it. I would say like, grabe no? Like, imagine yung kailangan kita or dahil sa'yo played by all of these amazing bands or if Celine Dion would sing it or Ariana would sing it. So, so it was always in the back of my mind. Just to preface it, Filipino music has always influenced my musical styling. So through the years, artists would hear the way I play and give me props for it. And I would, you know, always credit it back to all the teleseries I would hear. It's very dramatic and very, you know, emotional. So fast forward to 2020, everything got canceled. It was a really hard time. I thought to myself, like, what am I going to do? I don't have any work. And I just decided, like, this is my chance. This is my time. It was the late summer where I had the idea to do Kaibiga. I want to finally do it. I have worked with so many people, so many musicians throughout the years. It's about time. So I called them up. I'm like, look, guys, I have this crazy idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but I know that we're in a pandemic, but we'll make it safe. We'll do it. But I want to do this project where I take really classic Filipino love songs and turn it into something that the world can listen to and celebrate. It was really surreal for me because every single one was yes, 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 yes. And we, we did it. We did it out of love. A lot of emotions went into Kaibigan and I'm hoping that it comes through in what you guys hear in the music. And that word is also very important because I am in the belief that the Filipino is one of the best friends you can make any part of the world. Iba tayo bilang kaibigan. Iba tayo bilang pamilya. Uh, maybe because we treat our friends as a family. family. And let's start with the first part, the harana. <laughs> about it. How'd you come up with that concept? You know, harana is a very traditional type of bigao. Like, you know, you want to sing to your, your lover. And I wanted to incorporate Cebuano, like Bisaya, to my album too. The beginning part of it is actually Cesar Montano from the movie Anaghoy Sa Suba. And then I also wanted to introduce Kundiman. I love Kapantay Ang Langit. Like, I love that song. And Pilita Corales is such a legendary singer. Harana is like a nice way to introduce Filipino music. It's very traditional. I wanted to add my own flavor to it and I hope people loved it. And it's my um, opening because the album is my harana to the Philippines. So. Yeah, it's your payan, it's your tribute. And let's go to the second song, Kahit Isang Saglit, by yes. our friend Louis Ocampo. <laughs> I want to know why did you choose this song as a musical director? How did you attack the song with your singer? Kahiti Sang Saglit is one of my favorite OPM songs. I chose this song because it's from my dad. As I got older and, and started to realize what the song was actually saying, like not to get like dramatic about it, but when you listen to Kahiti Sang Saglit and what it's saying, it's basically, especially in these times, like life is too short, you know what I'm saying? And when you're able to convey that through the music and the songs, that's a powerful thing. And even Ailey, when she was recording it, she listened to the song and even before knowing what it meant, she already knew 
knew what it was talking about. It was talking about losing somebody. It kind of brought me back to my dad singing it and all the people that we've lost in 2020. And I thought that it was just the perfect way to open the album because, um, you know, life is short. And I wanted to make that the first statement, to savor each moment. It's a story that is familiar. Ailey is a Korean-American singer. Why did you choose her to perform Kaiti Sang Saglit? You know, I wanted to give Kaiti Sang Saglit a different take. K-pop dramas are so popular and I always loved the way how similar Korean music and Filipino music was. If you listen to it, Tito Boy, it still stays true to Sir Luis Ocampo's version, but still has that little flair of that K-pop drama. And, and she really killed it. She really delivered it, the tenderness of it. Amazing singer. Great interpreter. And that's also one of my favorite songs. Let's go to the third song. One of my favorite in your album. just does a magnificent uh, rendition of the song, Bakit Baba. Did you have a list of songs that you wanted to do before you had this album? Or did you just think about our songs as you went through it? You know, actually I had a list of songs, Tito Boy. I had already a planned set list and I knew who I, each singer, I, I knew exactly who I wanted to sing it. I just wanted to express my appreciation because Matt Bloy does certainly one of the best in your album. Oh, thank you, Tito. You will be so stoked to hear that Matt Bloy is such an amazing singer, phenomenal. I found him on YouTube. He has a lot of videos on YouTube. He's been on the four and he loves Filipino singers like Jake Zyrus. He loved Regine Velasquez. So when I told him about Bakit Baba, he was just super excited. He was like, I, of course, I've been wanting to do something in Tagalog. It's something different. He's going to do great things. We're going to do more music. You arranged the song, right? Yes, Tito. Brilliant arrangement. <laughs> Thank you. You have to listen to the songs. Matt does it, but he does it with clarity and a lot of heart. In the end of the song, I wanted to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> My job is done. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next one. Bakit Pa, which is sung by your sister. Bakit ka pa nakita? Bakit pa nakilala? Suko ay iiwan mo lang at sasaktan Kung siya higit sa akin Naroon man ang pagkaramdam ito Ay aking kakayanin Wow! She does a great version of this song. Jessa Saragoza is a singer that is difficult to cover because she's so unique. Yes. Yeah. How'd you guys do it? You know, Jessa Saragoza is actually one of my favorite singers. But growing up, me and my sister used to sing this song all the time. The Filipino parties, the weddings, you know, we'll be up there, Block it, Kapan! <laughs> We would just be going in. I have this vision for Bakit Pa to turn it into like very orchestral, very David Foster. She trusted me and you know, we turn it into that. It's like a very sultry song, Tito Boy. It's very Not extraordinary rendition of a song. <laughs> it's really a great song. Thank you. Tito Galen, Boy. Galen, congratulations <laughs> to you and to your sister. Uh, the next one is, of course, a Pangako, done by Nicole Scherzinger. Pangako, hindi kita iiwan Pangako, di ko pababayan Pangako, hindi ka na mag -isa. Tayong dalawa. 
Tell me the story. When I called her Tito Boy, I was so nervous. Siempre, like, we got close, but I don't want to be feeling close, you know? Like, uh-huh. siempre, she's still Nicole Scherzinger. So when I called her, I was like, Nicole, you know, it would be such an honor for the Philippines and everything. And it was probably like a seven minute message. And she messaged me back to Boy, and she goes, first of all, never ever be ashamed to ask me for anything. Um, you don't have to leave me an hour voice note. I'm going to do this. I'm so excited about it. I'm proud to be Filipino and I want to do this for the Philippines. So I was so excited. <laughs> Tito Boy cried with my sister. I was like, you, we got it. Nicole's going to sing it. I gave her the song. She was super excited. She loved the song. She loved Regine Velasquez. You know, her voice just soared in the record and God, it was so amazing. Probably one of the biggest highlights of my life. I never thought that I could get one of my idols singing Pangako. So that's my story. About she it. has her love. She has her support. And you know why this is also so one of the best, if one of the strongest songs in the album is because Pangako is a song that's so familiar to us. But Nicole does it her way. Yes. She takes it from where she is. She didn't try to do it the way Regine did it. Yes. She decided to do it the way she should do it. And it's so heartwarming. It's an original take on the song. Thank you, Tito Boy. And I wanted to make sure to not copy the original and just to highlight yeah. all the good things about Nicole's voice, like from the little whispers to you beat it. I'm so glad you love it. Oh my, no. For Nicole to have taken that path, I mean, bravo, really yeah. bravo. Another one, Kailangan Kita, Pia Toscana. Kailangan kita Ngayon at kailangan Kailangan mong malaman Na ikaw lamang Ang tunay ko Na mahal At ang ikong hiling ay Akapil You know, when YouTube first came out, I remember watching Regine's version. She was in this purple gown um, with Tito Martin on the side, like just cheering her on. And I remember her belting this big song. I love this song. Um, Kailang Kita is one of my all-time favorite Filipino songs. And Ogi El Kassid is one of my favorite songwriters, a, a, a true genius of OPM. I agree. And Regine Velasquez is no joke. I mean, when you yeah. hear her sing, I had to really find a singer that could give not just yung babirit and Pia Toscano. She had that perfect timbre, that perfect way of interpreting those songs that she would do Kailangan Kita because it's such a big song, Tito Boy. And I wanted this song to be kind of like my Contesera song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, she came in, Tito Boy. I think we recorded Kailangan Kita in probably less than two hours. She came in. I'm listening to her. I'm like, oh my God. Pia, you sound like a you sound like a Filipino singer, Pia. Like all the, you know, bakat ang puso mo. Like she got all those little things. I started crying and she started crying. And we're just like, oh, the Philippines is going to love it. Let's go to Usahay, MJ. Usahay. Magadamgo ako Na ikaw o gako Na kahit and Jake Zyrus are the reasons why there is a Troy Loretta. Throughout my beginning years as a musical director, I've learned so much, not just about Filipino music, but how to musical direct for an artist, how to produce an artist. When I chose Usahai for, for Jake, it was a no-brainer. Usahai is close to my heart, Tito Boy. It's for my grandma. I told Jake, you're Filipino. And I said, kapatid, we're gonna do Usahai. 
I wanted to do Jake Zyrus um, justice because this was the first record that we were doing. I wanted to bring out the little things in his voice, the things that people didn't know he could do. I hope that people love it. Usaha is one of my favorite songs on Kaibigan. It is quiet. It is haunting. And I'm proud of Jake. I'm proud of you, Troy. Very proud of Jake, a Philippine treasure, and it's to be celebrated. Let's go to the next one. Patuloy ang Pangarap, which was composed, of course, by a friend, Jonathan Manalo. Nanalig sa isang pangarap Ako'y naniniwala Ako'y alilipan At ang lahat Where do I start with the song? Tito Boy, I talked to Sir Jonathan about this idea for Kaibigan and I told him, Sir Jonathan, I need a song. Medyo malungkot yung album ko eh. Like, puro, ano, it's very sad, very emotional. So I need something inspirational. And he told me about this beautiful song that he wrote that Angeline Quinto sang. And I listened to it, I listened to it, and I told him, Sir Jonathan, this is perfect and I know exactly who's gonna sing this song. I called Shalea. Shalea Frazier is one of the greatest singers on the planet. The reason why I wanted to have her interpret Patuloy Ang Pangarap is because she was just the perfect spirit and the perfect voice to do that. And she just sang it so beautifully. Like, parang Whitney Houston ballad ang peg. Shalea just owns it. That's an important thing about singers, about new singers especially. We still have one song in the album. Of course, Regine's Hanggang Sa Dulo Nang Walang Hanggan. Habang ikaw ay maligay chose a song. I chose it. I love Hanggang Sa Duno Na Walang Hanggan. Even before asking Miss Reg, I, I wanted to end the album with just piano and violin because I always said that OPM is most beautiful when it's, it's just simple, when it's just the piano and a singer. And I wanted my album to end like that, to showcase the beauty. There's a lot of artists that have influenced me, but you know, Miss Regine's music, also the music of Sir Ogi is just such a big influence on my life. So being able to do this with her, Hanggang sa dulo na walang hanggan. And I just wanted it to be super simple. I talked to Miss Reg, and I know everybody is so used to you. Beat it. They're expecting you to be like, Hanggang sa dulo! Like, but I wanted it to be like very mellow. It was such a spiritual experience yeah. for me. That's another thing too, Tito Boy. You know, I've worked with so many beautiful artists. But the one artist that my parents like fangirled over when they heard, the artist that they started to cry about was Miss Regine. So when I told them, oh my God, mom and dad, I'm working with Miss Reg. Oh, like, oh my God, grab it. Like, and you know, they, they just loved it. It was a full circle moment for me as a musician trying to promote Filipino music. So it was a big deal. This is brilliance and generosity combined together. Troy Loretta, what is your story? You know, Troy Loretta, if I were going to tell my story, is basically the story of a Filipino boy from Hawaii with a dream. I am a musician. I'm a musical director. I'm a producer. I grew up in Hawaii, but I was raised by two Filipino parents. Yeah, you know, life was so much easier in Hawaii, you know. It was full of music, full of family, full of gatherings. And I told my parents, Shempre, you know, with Filipino parents, they want stability and they want to, you know, make sure that we're okay. And music is, you know, very unstable. So I got that, but they supported me. And me and my sister, we both did music and we kind of just dared to dream Tito Boy, you know, coming from Hawaii, it's such a small little island. So 
we knew that Filipinos could do it. So we moved to LA. The rest is history. I was able to work with a lot of different people. Thank God and thank you to my parents who were so supportive throughout the journey. You work with many people like? Oh uh, man, you know, I work currently with David Foster. I'm his musical director. I've got the privilege to work for artists like Ariana Grande, Andrea Bocelli, Steven Tyler, Justin Bieber, just, just really a talented, phenomenal, legendary artist. So when you say you worked with these global superstars, you work with them in what capacity? As a musical director? A lot of the times that my day job is musical directing. That's my main job. I put together all their live concerts. Whenever they have a performance on the Grammys or the AMAs, you know, the artists I work for, they call me to put that together. What do you think of the last Grammys? The last Grammys I did um, was actually Ariana Grande. And we did um, one of her songs. It was so beautiful. She was in this purple dress and piano and strings. It was amazing. You know, she asked me, hey, Troy, I'm going to be performing at the Grammys. I want to do this song. And it was this beautiful ballad. It was just piano and strings. And, I, you know, Tito, I was really excited. It's every musician's dream to play at the Grammy. So when I was able to do that with Ariana Grande, it was such a moment for me. And I really soaked it in. I was there at Staples playing the piano and just looking around. <laughs> so it was beautiful. That's living the dream. I was talking about Ariana Grande today because I know there was such a big controversy. Dahil, we fans of BTS who didn't make it against Ariana and Lady Gaga in the last Grammys because people were hoping that BTS would get the award. But of course, oh. it who Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. Well, you know, it's great that groups like BTS and especially, you know, Asian talent is starting to make its mark in the music industry. And I love that. Like, BTS is competing against Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. Like, I but they also made history because I think they were the first Asian group that performed an original song in the Grammys. Dynamite, which is an original song. Such a great song, so catchy. Thank you for not forgetting us, for not forgetting the Philippines. It's an honor to do this. You know, I've been very lucky, I think, to be in the industry. You know, there's a lot of Filipino talent, Tito Boy. Growing up, that's what inspired me. I saw all the kids around me singing and dancing, and I would watch TFC and I would see how amazing the singers are and the acting was. I cried along with the teleseries and to be able to do this in the industry, I'm really lucky. So Troy, when you brought up the idea to your parents, to mom and dad in Hawaii, and when you and Chess, yes, your sister, said that we want to go to LA, try our luck there, we want to work there, you know, we're musicians, what was the reaction like? The reaction was definitely worried, for sure. My parents are very practical people and you know we had already established a life in Hawaii but they were also very supportive and we were very touched by that because when we told them we wanted to do music we had a family meeting and they packed up their bags we literally left everything Tito Boy Troy nasaan ka ngayon sa buhay mo at sa karera mo you know i'm very happy with where I am at in my career. I'm able to do musical directing. And, you know, with the pandemic, I was able to touch into producing and being able to do this music has been a kind of a mission for me. I love Filipino music, Tito Boy. So now that we have that excuse, a little bit of time, I really want to continue with creating this bridge between the East and the West, especially for the Philippines. Because, you know, we have K-pop, we have J-pop, and OPM is something that I really want to take to the next level in the States and all over the world, if possible. So right. that's where I am, producing more music. And that brings us to your album, Kaibigan. Yes. You know, for many years, Troy, I would open my morning show, Homeboy, with a line, Kaibigan, tara, usap tayo. So that really resonates with me. How is it to be Asian American, or specifically Phil M, in the U.S. today? We hear about violence against Asians. How are you guys doing? Being a Phil M, especially now more than ever, the U.S. has been through so much when it comes to to our political state, our society. It's a little sad, Tito Boy, if I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Yesterday, I was driving and someone did a racial slur at me when I was driving. And it's just something that, not necessarily that we normalize, but you kind of just, that's just what we deal with today. And I'm using my voice, supporting anything against racism. Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian Hate. That's all we can do right now. You are in a very powerful platform. And that's music. Just inspire young musicians out there. Troy, before you got to where you are today, what was the biggest rejection? Ooh, Tito Boy. <laughs> Oh, man. I will remember one. I think one sticks to my mind. I won't name any names, but I remember 
doing the audition. I remember being super excited for it. I had run out of gas before the audition, actually. I had to call <laughs> my cousin and be like, hey, can you put gas in my tank? Because I was not Like, I was really looking for work. So, you know what, let's go. And I remember auditioning so excited again. And I remember them telling me that I was too ethnic. Uh, oh. I remember walking out of the audition crying. Thank you for sharing with us that story because that is important. People do not realize that you need your core, your real self, your ethnicity to get to where you are. You can't leave that behind because that's part of who you are. And as I listen to Kaibiga and your album, it's there. We can hear that because you're true to yourself. So people now are asking, how can we listen to what Boy and Troy are talking about? <laughs> so talk about star creatives music, talk about where people can listen to music, talk to people where Kaibigan can be found. Go ahead, Troy. I want everyone to please continue supporting Kaibigan. It's available on all digital platforms, iTunes, Deezer, Spotify, and all the lyric videos and music videos and all those good video content is going to be seen on Star Music's YouTube page. What is your relationship here with uh, Star Music? You know, I've been working a lot with Star Music. I've been working with them for years. I'm so glad that I'm able to co-produce this album with Star Music. They've been so supportive. Just want to push OPM Music and who else better than, you know, Star Music, ABS-CBN. So I love it. We just say thank you. Really, for all that you are and for all that you do for this country. Thank you. I just want to take the opportunity, you know, I don't know when the next time I'm going to see you again. For Tito Boy, I can't begin to express how surreal this moment is for me. I grew up listening and watching TFC and I always imagine as a little boy being in the mirror, answering questions as if I was talking to you. And even for Kai Began, I knew that I wanted to talk about my story with you. So I'm savoring it. This is so amazing for me. <laughs> my Lola would be so proud that I was able to talk to you, Paul. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'll bring out my imaginary mirror and I'll put it in front of you, Troy. <laughs> you are standing in front of my imaginary mirror. Troy, today, what do you want to tell that young man in the mirror today? If I were going to say something to myself, I would say, you know, Troy, I'm very proud of you. You've been through so much that nobody will ever, ever, ever know. But if you continue to love yourself, believe in yourself, and keep that spirit of wanting to change the world with music, keep that childlike spirit. I believe that one day you're gonna affect the world in ways that you can never ever know. And at the same time, you're gonna do it with passion, with class. You're gonna change the world, baby. Don't give up. Bravo, Troy. You have every reason to be proud of that story. There's a beautiful line of opera that she got from Maya Angelou that I always quote. I come as one, I stand as 10,000. You stand on the shoulders of your ancestors. This whole country is proud of all the things that you do. Not just for yourself, not just for art's sake, but for all of us Filipinos and for your country, the Philippines. Thank you. Maraming salamat. You have my big love and my respect. Maraming maraming salamat. Hi, people of the Philippines and people of the world. Hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking.